Hello and welcome to Excel Academy's second annual BSMD webinar. My name is Anish Devadi, and I am a third year UNR BSMD student, and I'm also an academic and marketing consultant for Excel Academy. I have four other panelists here with me today. Uh, first up, Saad Chaudhry. Uh, hi guys, I'm Saad. Uh, I'm a freshman in UNR's BSMD uh, program. Uh, I'm from Vegas. I graduated from Coronado High School last year. Awesome, and Roshan? Hi, my name is Roshan. I'm a third year BSMD student. I'm a senior in my undergrad program and uh, I'm from Reno, uh, went to Davidson. Awesome, and a cool thing about Roshan is that the program is traditionally eight years, four years of undergrad, four years of med school. Roshan's just doing that in seven years. So three years of undergrad, four years of med school. So next up, Hannah. Hi everybody, my name's Hannah and I'm a second year BSMD student and I'm from Reno. Awesome, and last but not least, Keetna. Hi guys, my name is Keetna. I'm a third year BSMD. I'm a junior at UNR and I grew up in Battle Mountain, Nevada. Nice. Alrighty, so let's get right into it. What is BSMD? BSMD are pipelines that confer conditional acceptance into med school for high school students. Uh, these programs are either BSMD, BAMD, or BSDO but essentially they, are, they allow students to earn a bachelor's of science or arts degree immediately followed by their medical degree, whether that's MD or DO. Now the programs vary in length from six to eight years, but the discrepancy comes in the undergrad portion. So you're not gonna be expected to do med school in anything less than four years, but the undergrad portion will be anywhere from two to four years, and then med school will be immediately after, and that's gonna be another four years. Uh, these programs are incredibly competitive. I'd like to think they're more competitive than Ivy Leagues. They have an acceptance rate typically of 1% to 4%. Alrighty. Uh, as for BSMD programs in the US and where to apply, there's roughly 42 programs uh, across the country, but it's important to keep in mind that 20% of them, or one in five, give preference to in-state graduates. UNR's BSMD uh, in particular, where all the panelists go to, they only accept students that graduate from Nevada high schools. So they're very selective as for their in-state graduates. The following couple of slides, we're gonna kind of briefly go over those 42 BA BSMD programs in the country and discuss their costs, durations, and, um, and other factors such as that. And it's important that when you're applying, you keep in mind not only cost, but also location, applicant residence preference, and program size. UNR's program size, so like the size of their cohort, is relatively pretty small. It averages from seven students to like 15 students. I know some more uh, bigger programs in the country have bigger cohorts. So if that's an important factor for you, that's important to keep in mind when selecting the list of schools you want to apply to. Alrighty, so we're not gonna go over every single school on here because it is listed on that link in the previous slide, but I would like to point out that, I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, but Brown University, that's an Ivy League. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool that they have a BSMD program too. California North State, that's a new school. So they haven't, their med school, I don't believe it's accredited yet, but because it's not accredited, they do give out hefty scholarships to try to get a good incoming class. Case Western Reserve, they partner with Cleveland Clinic, which is probably the greatest hospital. So that's another cool program. And uh, this is the remaining list of those 42 programs. My favorite one's right here. It's the University of Nevada School of Medicine. Uh, it's a beautiful program for Nevada students. Uh, so I have some friends that go to Rochester and actually Virginia Commonwealth University. I interviewed there for their BSMD program and then made the decision between VCU and UNR and ultimately chose UNR. All right, so even though there's 42 programs and the requirements are going to be different from program to program, there's some general trends that apply and those are the trends I wanna discuss with you guys today. Uh, if at any point you guys have questions, feel free to stop me and I will get to that. But essentially, you want to start preparing your resume from ninth or 10th grade. If this is something that you know you want, given how competitive these programs are, it's better to start earlier than later. Uh, I'm a little weird. I knew in third grade that I wanted to be a doctor. It's fine if you're normal and you're not like that. But 
you should start preparing from the beginning of high school if this is something you're looking towards. Um, as for GPA, there's no cut and dry score. Within my cohort, there's a range of GPAs, but uh, in order to be a successful applicant, it's ideal that you're in the top 5% of your graduating class. That top 5% becomes important in the SAT and ACT as well. You wanna to strive to be in the 95th percentile or higher, especially in those math and science portions on the ACT in particular. If you can get higher scores in those, it's a little bit more understandable if maybe your other sub scores aren't as high, but overall try to shoot for a 95th percentile score. Um, exposure to medical field. I know that's a little bit tough because you guys aren't 18 and there's a lot of restrictions for high school students, but try in any way that you can to get some shadowing, volunteering and clinical research. Uh, the panelists will be describing what they did in high school. So hopefully that can help alleviate some concerns as to how you can get these experiences even if you're not 18. Um, as for your essays, the panelists can kind of delve into that too as to like what they focused on in their essays if they'd like, but you kind of want to tie in your connection to medicine with perhaps a personal hardship. You're trying to paint a narrative to show the admissions committee why at such a young age you know for sure that this is the path for you. So however you want to go about constructing that story, just make sure it's a good one, make sure it's personal, and most importantly, make sure it showcases who you are. As for the letters or recommendations, you should try to get diverse letters that showcase who you are from a holistic viewpoint. So maybe get a letter from a healthcare professional. I know I got one from the hospital I was volunteering at, an academic letter and a non-academic letter. And by non-academic, I mean like an extracurricular organization, uh, maybe they would write the letter for you. Uh, as for the extracurriculars you should do, in high school, you can try to focus on sports, music, clubs and activities and leadership. There's no like specific extracurricular you need to do. You don't need to be in HOSA to get into BSMD. Find your passions and do a really good job at pursuing those passions. And if you show that with your extracurriculars, that's all that really matters. And the interview we're gonna actually talk about on the next slide. So UNR, BSMD and other BSMD programs across the country uh, typically don't do that traditional one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-one interview. They do something called MMI or multiple mini interviews. And, hold on. So these multiple mini interviews typically have 10 stations with various problems or ethical situations. And how it works is they're set up as different stations. You go up to the door and there's a question posted on the door. You'll have one minute to read the question and formulate an answer, which I know sounds tough, but the more practice you do, you'll be able to formulate an answer in that time. And then you're going to knock on the door, go inside, and then you'll have roughly seven to 10 minutes to actually answer the question. That time varies from program to program, and UNR itself changes that requirement every year. So just pay attention to what they say if you get selected for an interview. Most importantly though, whether you have seven or 10 minutes, you wanna approach this situ situation with an open mind. You wanna explore all the perspectives, but in the end, be firm in voicing your opinion. That's what a doctor does. They make a decision, but they also explore all perspectives leading up to that decision. And that's what they wanna see you do on a micro scale when you're in high school. You wanna be also be sure to tie back your answers to your own healthcare experiences. I tied in some of my experiences from volunteering and shadowing in a research lab. This just kind of proves the authenticity of what you listed on your resume and makes you sound more knowledgeable. And most importantly, be personable, be yourself. I'm a little dorky and quirky and I let that shine in my interview and I think that worked out well for me. So just don't try to be someone you're not be yourself, answer these questions, and you'll probably be just fine. A typical example for high school students um, would be you catch your friend who is on the verge of getting kicked out of BSMD for his poor academic performance, cheating, what do you do? So in the BSMD program, you have to maintain a 3.5 GPA as an undergraduate student in order to successfully matriculate into the medical school. So in this situation, let's say your friend is on that verge of falling below a 3.5 and so they cheat. So what would you do in that situation? I know personally, I would try to talk to my friend, figure out what's going on in his life 
that caused him to think that like this is the best solution for the situation he's in. So you want to showcase your empathy and realize that something is not always cut and dry. But if it is something like cheating, you also want to be sure that you maintain professionalism and integrity and report that to the direct means of command as necessary. Um, as a doctor, it's important to be compassionate, but when ethical violation, ethical norms are violated, it's also important to report that. So in this situation, there is no right or wrong answer, but you want to showcase that you understand maybe why your friend might have come to this point and made this decision, try to support your friend, but then ultimately maybe work with your friend to turn himself in and make the necessary changes so that he can continue perhaps in the BSMD program, maybe not, but if he does, he'll do it the correct academically honest way. So that's just a brief little example. If you Google MMI interviews, uh, you'll find several YouTube videos that will kind of give you some pointers too. There's some books that also talk about how to master the MMI. And even better than that, Excel Academy offers college counseling where they can actually prep you for the MMIs from people who had served on admissions committees for medical school. So you'll be super prepared if that is an avenue you wanna take. So the life of a pre-med who gets into med school, um, whether you're BSMD or pre-med, because the BSMD program is eight years, you'll traditionally be doing more or less the same as your pre-med classmates. You'll probably be in a competitive science major. If you're in BSMD, you have to choose from neuroscience, biology, chemistry, biochemistry, microbiology, and immunology. You may opt to double or triple major, but it's not necessary. It might be a little bit more beneficial if you're a traditional pre-med trying to bolster your application for medical school. You may also opt to minor in science or a non-scientific field of study. I myself am majoring in neuroscience, so that's the one I picked out of the six. Uh, I'm minoring in business administration and I have a focus track in nutritional sciences. So it is possible to get a holistic and diversified education experience, whether you're BSMD or a traditional college student. Um, when you're pre-med, you want to have a competitive GPA, but you want to focus on particularly your science classes and making sure your STEM GPA stays relatively high. You want a competitive MCAT score. If you're in UNR BSMD, I believe our threshold score is a 503 out of 528, but if you're a traditional pre-med, you might want to aim for something a little bit higher, again, just to make you stand out from the tough competition you'll face. Uh, BSMD or not, you want to have ample clinical volunteering, shadowing, and research. It becomes a little easier once you turn 18. People are more likely to hire you and not see you as a risk. Uh, you also want to join medical and non-medical clubs and activities. I myself am in Phi Delta Epsilon. It's a medical professional fraternity on campus. You could also try studying abroad, doing some international medical missions, scribing or other medical related internships. My roommate is a scribe at St. Mary's. It's a local hospital here in Reno. So I know that looks really good for med schools. And then networking. So you can do that by either joining a medical fraternity or reaching out to current medical professionals. But just like it's important in business, networking is really important in medicine to help you find the right people to achieve your goals and so that you can also help other people achieve their goals. So yeah, I know that was a lot, but again, if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me at any time. And I'm kind of done talking for a little bit. We're going to meet the panelists and then we're going to delve into your guys' questions. And then we have a list of pre-selected questions that are fairly common that we want to address with you guys. So first up is me. Uh, my name is Anish Devadi. again. Uh, my major is neuroscience and I have a minor in business administration. When I was applying to BSMD in high school, uh, these are some of, the, some of the few things that I did to make my resume a little bit better. I uh, hosted an anti-bullying campaign for Clark County. I was actively involved in my key club. I was treasurer and I was a volunteer at St. Rose Hospital. I think I ended with around 800 plus hours of volunteering. I started freshman year and did it every Sunday. So that was a fun commitment. I was also a student ambassador for my high school. Uh, what that means is we would go to local middle schools and try to recruit students to come to our magnet program. I graduated from Clark High School, if I haven't said that yet. 
Also, I was part of the Southern Nevada Water Authority Youth Advisory Council. We found different solutions to try to address the drought issues in Las Vegas. I was also a volunteer for Comfort Care Hospice. I did uh, several ambulance ride-alongs with the American Medical Response, and then I was a physician shadower uh, through UMC Hospital. As for my current and future endeavors, I am an academic and marketing consultant for Excel Academy. Uh, I'm part of the Honors College here at UNR. I'm a peer mentor and alumni task force assistant. I was a tutor for Upward Bound. They provide free tutoring for first-generation low-income high school students. I shadowed through healthcare partners. Uh, it was an internal medicine doctor. I'm also vice president of communications for Shopping Angels. They provide uh, groceries and other services for immunocompromised individuals. It was an organization that my friends and I started as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm also a volunteer at Renown, uh, part of Phi Delta Epsilon Medical Fraternity and a mentor for Science Fit. Science Fit uh, is a week long program that helps you and our freshmen transition into college. In fact, uh, Hannah and Saad were both my mentees and I was their mentor, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, as for my future endeavors and plans, I just really wanna get a good MCAT score. I'm taking that this summer and then get my application together for med school. And then in med school, I wanna explore with an open mind and figure out what specialties would make me happy. All righty, uh, next up we have Saad. All right, uh, I'm Saad, uh, again, I'm a freshman, so this, you know, just starting in college. And my first year college experience is a lot different than most of yours hopefully will be. It was all on Zoom. Uh, attended basically Zoom University for a year. Um, so if we just look over my VSMD application though, um, I did a lot of clubs uh, when I was in high school and mainly that's just because I really enjoyed doing clubs after school. So like, I just made sure I had some club, something to do after school every day. It was a nice way for me because I, I really enjoyed them. So like, you know, if I like a test on like a, that and someday, you know, the one thing that's kind of got, got me through was like, oh, it's good, get to this test and after school, you know, I'll go to a uh, varsity quiz or science ball. So some of these uh, clubs that I joined, uh, Future Medical Professionals was one of them. At, um, and again, I went to Coronado High School, so some, maybe some of you guys are familiar if you are uh, at Coronado. Um, Future Medical Professionals is a club where we just kind of uh, engage in some things in the medical field. Like we did like a suturing, uh, banana suturing one day. That was a pretty fun one a lot of people like. We talk about different, uh, like we have a, a similar a similar meeting one day where we talk about like PSMD, stuff like that. Um, Vars to Science World, those were two of my favorite ones. They're kind of like a competition. Uh, varsity quiz is like a Jeopardy style uh, and science was is like Jeopardy but it's only about science so I prefer that one better because I, I enjoy science so much more than like the things like the arts um, and literature. Aviation club is actually a club I started <laughs> in uh, freshman year. I, I just I've always loved just flying like as a kid I was played like, with like those air hogs planes and stuff so I was like after a while you get bored of those and you just want to make your own as I got to that point so I started doing that and then I found friends in high school who did that so I started doing it with them and I just made like an official club with them at the school. National Honor Society, NHS, that's just, you know, the, a good volunteering as well as Leo Club, they're both, they offer you a lot of good volunteering experiences and the Moff data is a math tutoring uh, club. And I, I shadowed an orthopedic doctor and a pediatrician. Both of these were, the reason I was able to shadow them was because they were like my doctor. So I, I played basketball a lot uh, and it ends up to breaking your fingers every once in a while. So. Uh, I had to go to the orthopedic <laughs> quite often. So I just asked him, can I shadow you? He's like, yeah, sure. And then also my pediatrician, I also shadowed him as well. So that's, that's one way you can try and get some shadowing experience to just ask your doctors, hey, can I shadow you? Because they know you a little bit. They might, it's a good chance they'll say yes. I volunteered at St. Rose as well, same as Denisha, except I volunteered Saturdays. So I never saw him because he was coming in Sundays. Um, and then I also worked uh, in the summer between junior year and senior year, I worked at a research lab at UNLV. And the reason I actually got it is I just, my brother goes to UNLV and he would talk to me about the research lab. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I want to do that. He's like, what, what do you mean? You want to do that? You want to do that? I'm like, yeah. So I just, I went to the website and I sent in an application and they interviewed me and they let me in. And it's, I was surprised they let me in, but uh, you can give it a try. It's something I found very interesting. We did uh, research on Alzheimer's in a mouse model. Uh, and like I said, so I'm just starting college. So like, you know, you can see my current and future endeavors. This is a little, little small, we're just working on it. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, just get into college, just, you know, starting, starting fresh as a freshman. I want to join a re another research lab now that I'm at UNR, find another research lab because I really enjoyed doing research at UNLV. 
Um, and then I, ho- I held off on joining any clubs and organizations this year just because it was all online. And I was like, eh, is it going to be that like a fulfilling experience doing online? So I was like, because I was really hoping next year. And so far, the plan is for next year to return to more in-person activities, hopefully. So then next year, I'm trying to start joining things like clubs and organizations like FIDE and stuff like that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Saad. All right, next up we have Roshan. Hi everyone, my name is Roshan. Uh, I'm a senior undergrad student. So this is my third year in the BSMD program. Um, I'm currently majoring in microbiology and immunology. I have a minor in statistics and I'm also doing a focus track in research. So I guess I really like the microbiology immunology major at UNR because it has a lot of medical focus and I already knew some of the the faculty before I had entered um, UNR. So I already knew like who the professors were and how and how they taught. Um, I really like math research, like data analysis, that type of stuff. So decided to do, do a minor in that. Um, for my BSMD application, uh, at least GPA, ACT, and like whatever Anish already said, like he already covered it. Like my GPA was already above a 3.7 being unweighted. My ACT was, was in the 95th percentile. Subject tests are no longer going to be a thing, so I don't think it's important to be going over that anymore. Um, and for AP tests, so at my school, they weren't really, op- they were optional. So I know it's not like in the case with most high schools where everyone usually, like if you're taking a math class, you're probably taking AP Calc, right? Um, so for me, I ended up taking Calc, Statistics, um, Chemistry, and Biology, and that's all I really ended up taking. Um, and that's the, I don't know, the boring number side of stuff. In terms of like, relevant and I think useful activities when I came to my application. Um, I was a hospital volunteer at a local hospital called Renown um, for three years. Yeah, for about like three years, went there about every Sunday um, for about for three years. Um, Just normal, like sitting at the front desk, helping out, you know, telling here's where your patient room is and kind of just helping out around uh, the hospital. Nothing too serious, but that's kind of what you get into when you're in high school. I was a research intern at UNR. Uh, During my junior year, I basically just asked around because I was interested in it. And someone, some PI said, yeah, I'll be willing to take you in. Uh, I didn't start doing anything significant when I first went there. I spent a majority of my like first six months just learning what what everything was. And uh, at least as I started entering my senior year, I actually started like working on projects with other um, faculty there. Uh, DECA. I did DECA for three years. I went to a bunch of the international conferences. Uh, I ended up becoming president during my senior year. So that was like my big leadership activity that I did in high school. Uh, Speech and debate, it was something that I just did consistently. I went to local tournaments. I didn't really do anything much more beyond that. But I do know that that is really helpful when it comes to building your speaking ability and your ability to present in front of a bunch of other people. When it comes to physician shadowing, this I was only really able to begin after I was 16. And I ended up basically asking anybody who I could and looking through any like programs that were available locally. So I asked my primary care physician who I was just, you know, seeing every year for doctor's appointments, just ask, could I shadow you? And she said, yes. She ended up even writing me a letter of rec, you know, by the time all was said and done. Uh, we have local programs for shadowing ER doctors applied through that. We have a local program for shadowing orthopedic physicians. So went through that and they accepted. Um, sometimes they will only be really stingy about it. Say we need to wait till you're 18. Uh, that does make it a little bit harder, but sometimes you can, because with shadowing, you're essentially just following someone around. As long as you're not like doing anything physically, it's one of those activities that I think is really useful not even just for the application, but just for learning if you're interested in medicine to begin with. I think it's really valuable because we have our own preconceived notions of what being a doctor is like, just because, you know, we sit at a doctor's office and, you know, we see what they do like with respect to us, but we oftentimes don't see what like a day in the life would be like. So that's why I think shadowing is a really important thing. If you can get it in some shape or form, it's, it's pretty good, both for the application and both if you, you know, want to feel that whether you're interested or not. Uh, tutoring, yeah, I tutored um, students for, well, the SAT, well, okay, well, that's after college. Well, in high school, I tutored people for chemistry and AP chemistry. Um, journalism, I was part of my school's video editing team, so we made, like, weekly videos and whatnot, so I was just, like, the head doing stuff like that. 
And uh, my high school is located on UNR's campus, so it allowed me to take UNR courses in high school. But that's also a thing that if you can take community college classes that are like higher level science or higher level math, that really does show uh, initiative as well as like your your ability in those subjects, you know, really going above and beyond um, like normal high school level stuff. So my current endeavors, I worked in that virology lab, even continuing into college, ended up co-authoring a paper. Um, I returned back to my DECA club, um, kind of just, you know, judging and helping them out when they need like someone to help students, you know, with their events and in preparation for their competitions. Um, I worked a, a summer during, I worked during the summer at a UNR public health uh, research um, office where we helped design a system that would help uh, take account of all licensed healthcare professionals because that system doesn't really exist. It's through individualized surveys. Um, it was my first sort of exposure towards a more public health and, and data-based research uh, program. Uh, I continued with more physician shadowing because even though I would already like at this point, I know I want to become a physician, but physician shadowing is all equally just as important. So you can you know get a better feel of different specialties uh, and hobbies, just kind of working on like stuff that I'm interested in. You know, what are things that, that make me happy and interested and, you know, bring fulfillment that are outside of just being a physician. It's one of those things that I think I'm really happy about when it comes to BSMD stuff that I can actually do those things. Um, because I know a lot of other people who are pre-meds graduated with me and are, have their plate full with loads of stuff to do. Uh, my future goals, I want to be able to conduct clinical research and hopefully head my own project at some point. Um, I, I'm going to be starting medical school next year, so I really want to figure out what specialties I'm interested in because I'm kind of open to everything. And yeah, just doing well in medical school. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Roshan, and congrats again on med school. Um, next up, we have Hannah Schultz. Um, hi again, everyone. My name's Hannah. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm also a microbio major, as is Roshan, and I'm actually minoring in community health sciences. So um, my focus track is rural and community health. So I decided, you know, a lot of those line up because um, your focus track, you have certain class requirements, but it's just not as many to do the full minor, but a lot of them overlap. So that's definitely a consideration to make um, if you do end up in a program. So um, I'm actually really interested in like public health and that kind of thing. So I just was like, you know, I want to do something that I'm interested in. Um, so that was a obvious choice for me. But um, as for my BSMD application, so I was actively involved in a lot of clubs um, and kind of, I think this is a common theme in a lot of us, but we all like to really be involved and find like fun things to do with our time. So I really did a lot of things that I personally enjoyed um, so I was the president of my high school's National Honor Society. Um, I was the captain of our varsity cheerleading team. So that was something that was really fun for me. Um, I have a dance background growing up and my high school didn't have a dance team. So I was like, you know, I'm going to try something new. And I absolutely loved it. It really, I think it really instilled like school spirit in me. So I'm really sad with COVID and everything that we can't go to any of the UNR sporting events because I love basketball, if I'm going to be honest. So stuff like that. Um, and then I was also president of, we had a women's service club on my campus, um, which I really enjoyed. And we worked with the local renal community to help different homeless shelters and do food drives and toiletry drives and anything we could do as a high school. Um, I was also involved in a youth choir at my local church. Um, I actually did that since sixth grade. So I did that for eight years. Um, so I think something big to take out of some of the things that you do during high school is they're definitely looking for, um, like a commitment long-term that you're not just like doing something like one and done. So that was one thing that was really important to me, but like, I really enjoyed it as well. So it's something like that where I found it really fun, but also shows commitment and dedication to a different organization. Um, I also worked at the Desert Research Institute, which I still currently do. I'm just doing something a little bit different, but at the time I did a sustainability project where I focused on different things that could be utilized without their, throughout their facilities. And there's actually one in Vegas as well as Reno. So um, I worked with them to assess what resource the facility was using and to find more sustainable options that would better reflect the environmental focus of the company. And then, you know, as any typical teenager, I was a stylist at Francesca's, so retail experience is always good. And I actually currently work at Loft, so it's just something that I like to do on the side. I really enjoy, like, 
fashion and things like that and clothes. So, and you know, customer service experience is always good to learn those people skills and like how to do some conflict management if there's unhappy customers. But um, I think it's a really great way to get out there and learn how to talk to people. Um, and then I also, um, similar to Rashan, Rashan, sorry, um, I was a volunteer at Renown for, they have like a high school summer volunteer program, which I did. And then I actually did a four credit internship at Renown where I worked in the imaging department and I was able to kind of go around and see all the different kinds of imaging that are used in the medical field. Um, and I think that really helped me kind of see like, oh my gosh, there's so many options when it comes to medicine. And it really opened that door for me. Like I, like the options are endless, honestly. And just within one department, like imaging specifically, there's just so many things and you can do like interventional radiologies, more surgery oriented versus some other things that are a little more patient oriented, things like that. Um, and then I was also involved in National Charity League. So that was another long-term volunteering group that I really enjoyed. And I got to spend time with my mom doing that. So that was really fun for me. And then I also did a trek with Build On to Nicaragua where we fundraised all of the money to build a school. And then we went to Nicaragua and built it with villagers. And it was, honestly, it sounds super cliche, but it honestly like changed my life and my outlook on education and how amazing it is like to have these kinds of opportunities which makes me, me like even more appreciative of being in this program and things like that, where I have these amazing opportunities to further my education as much as I can. Um, as for my current and future endeavors, um, so as I said, I still work at the Desert Research Institute. I'm just doing something a little different now where I work with their foundation to get money and find different ways for their researchers to do their environmental research throughout Nevada and around the country and the globe. Um, and then I also did my internship this past summer. So I'm a sophomore. So your freshman summer, you do an internship. And I think that's really nice because you can kind of choose something that you want to do and find something that kind of fits within your niche. Um, so I was able to work with Nevada Health Centers to do, um, I did more like social media kind of stuff. So that was a little out of my comfort zone, I guess I would say, but I really enjoy art and that kind of thing. So it was awesome for me to work with and like build their social media, look at how social media and things like that can be used to reach more rural places in Nevada that don't have the same access to healthcare and medical professionals as we do in like Reno or Vegas. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And then, as I said, I still have a retail job and, you know, it's, it just proves that there's so many different things you can do and it's easy. It, I wouldn't say it's easy, but um, it's definitely manageable to have a job and a full course load and still do things that you find are fun. Um, so like I'm involved in Nevada Wishmakers, which is one of our clubs on campus that partners with Make-A-Wish. Um, and then I'm also involved in the Co College of Science Student Advisory Board, as well as Greek Life. So You'll hear from Keetna, but Keetna and I are both in the same social sorority, um, which is Kappa Alpha Theta. And I have found that that has been, <laughs> Keetna's wearing her sweatshirt, <laughs> um, but we, I, I'm not going to speak for both of us, but I know that it's been such an awesome opportunity for me to like find that good pairing between like a break from school and something that's enjoyable for like my personal life and whatever but also I'm actually like this I'm the scholarship director for our chapter so it kind of combines both like academics and social life and just finding that perfect balance and time management with that um, and then I'm also in our microbiology club and then as Anisha talked about I'm a science fit pack mentor in the past so um, definitely lots of things that you can do <laughs> Um, and then as for my little potentially joining the military point, you know, that's up in the air, but um, something I'm definitely considering for the future is um, as I'm in the BSMD program and I matriculate to med school, there's a program that the um, army has where you can do a, like a health profession scholarship program. So I'd like co-currently be enlisting in the military and then being an military doctor. So, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunities that come with that. And it's just a little bit of a different side of medicine. So I think it's a good point to say, like, just because you're like, there's no limits when it comes to medical school. There's so many different things you can do with it. And it just depends on how you want to give back. So yeah, that's all I've got. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Hannah. And for those of you that are younger in the audience, this might seem a little overwhelming, but you have to keep in mind, this is four to eight years of work being listed on one slide. So it does seem like a lot, but 
you have time to do it. And last but certainly not least, we have Keetna. Hi guys. Um, so my name is Keetna and I am currently majoring in neuroscience with my focus track in rural and community health. Um, I grew up in a really small town, so that was really important for me because I definitely had a very different um, outlook of what physicians were and how healthcare worked because in rural communities, healthcare is very um, lacking. So um, for my application, I started out with HOSA in high school, and that was kind of my first step into what the medical field was like, and I fell in love with it. I went to state and nationals for HOSA. Um, and then I was also involved in NHS. I was the president of our National Honor Society at my school. So getting that leadership opportunity was awesome. Um, I was also the president of the Teen, Teens Against Tobacco Use Club, which we would go to surrounding communities and educate the elementary schools on tobacco use. Um, and then I was a three sport athlete. I was the captain of those teams my senior year too. So that was really awesome for leadership um, potential. And then I think one of my biggest things that I would say was one of the most important things for my application was I was a CNA. And so my senior year of high school, I did an entire course with a few other kids um, and we got our certification to work as CNAs. So we worked in our long-term care facility with patients who were in hospice. And that absolutely changed my outlook on the healthcare field and what I wanted to do. And that was it for me. And so through that, I met a couple of doctors and I actually started shadowing in the ER. Um, so that was my shadowing opportunity through that, which was amazing. Um, and so being a CNA and shadowing in the ER was really what solidified being wanting to be a doctor for me. Um, well, oh, and I would say another really important part of my VSMD application that I think made me a competitive applicant was being from a small town, we didn't have any AP or IB classes. We had one honors class, so that was it. So my sophomore year of high school, I enrolled at the community college and I received my associate's degree before my high school diploma. So taking some college courses through our community college was so helpful for me and it really prepared me for what um, university, the University of Nevada is like. And so I would say, definitely look into taking some AP or college classes because it will really help prepare you and make you extremely competitive. Um, currently in college, um, I do, I did work until last semester. I worked at Dutch Bros Coffee and since then I've been doing a lot of volunteering. So I currently volunteer about once a week with the Food Bank of Northern Nevada. We do mobile harvest. So we just create like bags of food for people, for families to come pick up who are in need. Um, I also work with the Nevada, I volunteer with the Nevada Diabetes Association, which was actually provided to me through the BSMD program. Um, so I help educate like kids with type one diabetes on how to take care of themselves and how to manage the disease. And then I also volunteer through COVID childcare. I provide child care to healthcare workers who have been impacted by COVID who really need the extra help around their house. And then I'm also involved in Greek life with Hannah, which has been such an awesome opportunity. I would definitely recommend doing, finding something that can take you away from academic academia a little bit and be your thing because Greek life for me was that and the connections it has given me to for college have been absolutely amazing. Um, and I also got into yoga this year, so I've been really into yoga, and that was a really fun hobby I have. So um, in the future, I would really like, I'm really interested in becoming a pediatrician or an emergency medicine doctor. Um, I'm open to anything, though. That can always change. And then I'm also working on being able to do a handstand. That's up there in my goals. And overall, just making a better impact in the world, because that's what we're here for. And if you want to be a physician, I think that's got to be your main your main goal there. So, yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you, and I'm really glad that being able to do a handstand is up there with becoming a doctor. <laughs> so, that's great. Um, all right. So, before we jump into our list of pre-selected questions, I'm going to stop sharing the screen right now and then like look at you guys and see if you guys have any questions before we do that. Um, 
All right, well, welcome everyone. Nice to see your names on a screen. But if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or unmute yourselves and ask away. All right. Uh, what does a typical daily schedule look like? Uh, so that's actually part of our pre-selected questions. So we will get to that. But that's a really good question. That's why we included it. Anyone else? Hmm. Okay, I think it might be best if we go back to sharing the presentation and then we'll go over the list of pre-selected questions, including Haley's question about what does a typical daily schedule look like? Can you guys still see my screen okay again? Awesome. Okay, let me minimize this. All right, so the first question we have here is what opportunities do you feel you had because of the BSMD program that you may not have had if you took the general pre-med track? I wanna talk about this a little bit. Um, it, for me, especially during the pandemic, cause we're on Zoom, it's hard to meet people and, you know, make like a friend group. So it was just like an easy friend group. It's like, here, these people are great, talk to them. And then all of a sudden I had people I can talk to uh, right away in college. Uh, and we all got really close, even though we we're all like, you know, uh, you know, online and we're not able to like meet each other often. We like played like Among Us online, uh, did a bunch of like online stuff like that where we still was like get to know each other. Um, otherwise, if I didn't, if I joined UNR this year without BSNB, I probably would know like one other person at UNR just because the way like you online classes go, you don't go like, hey, you want to go to lunch? Like after you don't say that after <laughs> after a Zoom session, you don't be like, you want to go get lunch from like the Joe or something like that it doesn't happen. I also want to talk on this. Um, one thing that I was thinking about that the BSMD program gave me was specifically for the MCAT preparation. I had no idea what was going on with how to prepare for the MCAT. And I felt extremely lost. And you hear about spending thousands of dollars on these test prep sites and everything like that. But the great thing about BSMD was they literally handed me both the entire um, Kaplan like test prep book set as well as the exam crackers and then they also like supply you with all of the things you need to take practice full length tests and everything like that. So you're saving like hundreds of dollars on MCAT test prep by having the BSMD program provide these material materials for you and that in itself this year I didn't expect that and it was so, so amazing. And I think that was hands down one of my favorite parts of the BSMD program. And I know no other pre-med students have any thing like that and they have to spend the money on those courses. So having that was amazing. Awesome, thank you guys. And then before we go to the next slide, oh, sorry, did anyone else have anything to say about this question? I just thought of an, another thing. Another thing is like, uh, uh, maybe you guys can talk a little more about it because I'm just starting, but I think uh, at least for me too, it's kind of decreases the stress during college because you don't have to stress about like kind of like hitting things and making sure you do certain things to get into medical school, medical school. You already given that, right? You just have to hit the program requirements. And then from that, I feel like it gives you a little more time to explore things that you really want to explore. Definitely agree. As long as you maintain the GPA threshold of 3.5 for both your overall classes and your science classes and get that 503, then everything else is really is up to your creative discretion. So that is a cool advantage of BSMD. There's a couple questions in the chat that I don't think I've included in this presentation. So let's just go through those real quick. Uh, so Ava's question, do you know how they chose their admits? What is weighted more heavily, GPA, test scores, extracurriculars, or interviews? So I just went through the admissions because I'm a freshman, right? Um, and it's not, nothing's heavily weighted over anything. It's very holistic uh, admissions process. And like, like I can talk about like test scores, but that's something we talked about. Like me, I just, uh, for me, I was, I was kind of lucky. I'm kind of good at uh, standardized tests. So I, I took my AC, SAT once, ACT once, done, called it, 
uh, called them. Some of the some of my friends in the program they were they struggled with their SAT SAT. They took it several times to just you know meet the the requirements for the program, and the, you know they got a little bit. To, they got there, and then they still onto the program. Like uh, nothing is specifically like it's like oh you need this test score and you're good, or you need this GPA and you're good. It's it's a very holistic thing, right? So if you can you know maybe if you're lacking on maybe test scores, but maybe you you can you know excel in your interviews or have really good extracurricular experiences, you can talk about. It's a very holistic approach to their admissions. Yeah, that's awesome. Anyone else have? Yeah, uh, so I think on that point, um, so just because I've been like, I have to deal with all the medical school admission stuff. So you hear from like a lot of their admissions like committees and you hear like what their process is. And one thing that I've always like heard time and time again is that they're looking for good medical students, like who would be good doctors like who is someone that, that like, okay, you, if you were to pick them, you would see them as like a good physician. And that's kind of the essence of what they're looking at. So if you're thinking of, okay, what will they weigh more heavily? I'd argue that your personal, well, like your essays that you write, as well as your letters of recommendation. And I think also your interviews really add to that, like quite a bit in terms of like, how, how are you as a person? Is this someone who I would like to be my doctor? Like that as a first step is something that'll separate you from, you know, all the other people who have good GPAs and good test scores and, you know, amazing extracurriculars, right? Those things help make you see like, I am more of a, of a good person, someone who can be a good doctor rather than just, I am a good student. Hope that answers your question. Going off of Roshan, I really agree with that. Um, in my ACT, actually my lowest scoring sections were math and science. And I was really scared applying. I was like, they are not going to think I'm very smart at the things I need to be smart at. But the thing is, my extracurriculars and leadership really, really, I think, carried me through that. And the thing is, if you're meeting the, the basic requirements even to apply, you, you're doing well. <laughs> and so it's okay if you don't have the strongest test scores or that 4.7 GPA. If you're a personable person, that's more what they're looking for because you can be the smartest person in the world, but if you can't connect with a patient on a personal level, then you're not a good physician. And so I think that's really what they care about a lot. Can I, I'd like to add to that really quickly too. Um, just like completely agreeing with Kina, I think bedside manner is huge. Like you don't want a physician that you, you feel like you can't even talk to. So I think speaking on the interview portion side of it, it can be really scary. Like I was literally mortified. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, like 10 mini interviews, that sounds awful. Like I'm gonna choke, it's gonna be horrible. But I would say if you're gonna focus on something right before you apply is, um, that was really beneficial for me at least was practicing for those interviews. And I don't wanna say like, you should not be like formulating an answer and trying to memorize it because you don't know what you're gonna encounter. But there's questions that you can just expect in your admissions process anywhere along the idea of like, why do you want to be a physician? And that's one of those where like you should like you probably already have an answer for that if you're interested. But everyone's like, you don't want everyone to say like, oh, I want to be a physician so I can help people. They hear that constantly. And that's maybe not something that's going to set you apart. So I think you really need to find like what's your personal reason for doing that? And that's a great time if you have like a personal anecdote or something in your family or something that really like inspired that in you to really think about that before you go into it. And then just getting familiar with um, the timing. I remember I looked up a bunch of questions like Anisha talked about earlier. There's YouTube videos, books, like all kinds of stuff just to get an idea so it was less intimidating. And I set like a seven minute timer and a one minute timer before to read my prompt and just kind of get my thoughts together and say like, okay, I know that like when you're speaking to someone, if you're having a conversation, their attention span is not the longest <laughs> just based on that. So maybe like, okay, I'm going to make two big points in my seven minutes and I'm going to make them more toward the beginning so I can catch their attention. And then at the end, I'm going to reiterate those to really like hone it in and get the message kind of to go home. So stuff like that, I think can really help you during your application. And it tells a lot about you as a person, for sure. Awesome. Did uh, anyone else have anything they'd like to say? 
kind of a general rule that you can think of is if once you get to the interview, you proved your worth to them academically. So from there, it's kind of like how well you do in the interview that'll distinguish you from your other uh, applicants. So uh, although they have these set requirements, as long as you're meeting them, then you're pretty much on the same playing field when you get to the interview. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention real quick is that because of COVID, they had to record interviews this year, but I anticipate that by the time you guys come around, things will go back to normal with the 10 multiple mini interview stations. Uh, so let's move on to the next question. I got a few direct messages too, but let's go ahead and uh, answer Jenny's question. What is there to do in Reno for fun? And is the BSMD program worth more than the University of California UC schools considering cost, fun, and general atmosphere and surroundings? So, so I think I can answer the second question pretty well because when I was going through the process of applying, um, I'm from California originally. Like I came to high school, like in Reno, right, due to circumstances. And uh, I like qualified for in-state tuition and, and for the UC schools. So for me, my decision was between like Berkeley versus UNR BSMD. It was between those two different schools. So I think I can speak to this question like pretty well. Um, so in terms of cost, if you are coming in out of state, the cost will be significantly greater. You have to account for living expenses. So you're going to be living in California. You have to account for tuition, which tuition is going to be 15,000 if you're in-state, 30,000 if you're out-state um, as like a general guideline. Additionally, when you're in the BSMD program, by meeting those baseline criteria, you automatically qualify for scholarships at UNR. And a lot of that really alleviated the already like you know, much lesser tuition cost. So it's like cost wise, the BSMD program, I think is, is much better on that front. Um, in terms of like, if you are interested in becoming a physician, there are legitimately no other better options than a BSMD program. Any physician you will ask will tell you like, take the seat, take it and just run with it. Like, like going to a UC school means you are going through the same pre-med track. You are still with thousands of other students where you are now competing for, you know, your professor's time for the limited amount of research positions. Like you can already hear with like Anish and Keetna who have already been in the program for a while, they're doing like a lot at UNR. And a lot of that comes to the fact that it's a smaller school. It's things where you have more opportunities available and just less people going at it. At Berkeley, one of my biggest concerns was if you're interested in like a research position at a lab, how are you going to get into that position when there are thousands of other bio students, chemistry students, bioengineering students? Um, it was something that really like hit on my mind. And another thing, so every state you kind of have like the in-state bonus, I like to call it, where if you're from California, usually California schools will like you more. If you're from Nevada, Nevada med schools will like you a little more. And that usually exists for about every state. The problem with California is that all of their medical schools are extremely competitive that like that advantage no longer really exists. So it, it's, it's, it feels like the BSMD program is, is such a good value if you're interested in becoming a physician. Like I, I really liked the UC schools. Like I grew up in California, like that's what I like was initially thinking I'd go into. But if you're interested in becoming a physician, I just don't think that the cost and like the opportunity that's available in this program, it's extremely difficult to be. There's a lot of fun stuff going on in California. Like I can't add it. Like I like, like, like Boba and Reno sucks. I'm going to be honest. Like I really love like my food in like Berkeley and like California, whatever, but I have lots of friends who are in California, but in terms of like, I want to become a physician and for between choosing those two, I'd really go with the BSMD program. I hope that answers your question. That was great. Yeah, Hannah? I would like to touch on both parts of that question, if that's okay, really fast. Um, just adding to Rashawn's idea, I actually have a friend who goes to Berkeley who's a good friend from high school. And I was talking to her about this and I just think this is a big difference is she literally had to go through like a formal interview process just to get into an entry level business club. And the thought of that for me, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I just went to the club fair and signed up and now I already have all of these resources. 
So I think like personally, I um, didn't, I didn't apply anywhere in California, just also due to cost. Um, UNR was definitely the best financial option for me. And I hope to not have a lot of debt <laughs> coming out of medical school, but um, just things like that. Like, I think we have so many opportunities for, even for the size of our school, like we do have a good amount of undergrads, but there's just a huge difference between like our size and maybe a UC school. And the fact that we have so many awesome clubs and resources that can help you network super easily where like you're set up for success. You're not competing just to get into a club where you can like participate in your interests. Like, I think it's so much more accessible to be like, oh my gosh, I think microbio club sounds cool. Like I wanna go make agar art. Like we did, like how fun is that? And you're learning at the same time. Like that was a big difference, I guess I'd say. And then as for fun things to do in Reno. So um, I'm from Reno, but I grew up in Southern, like the Southern part of Reno. And so my family's like 15 minutes away, but um, I learned so much from moving to campus. Like there's just so many different parts of Reno, but one of my favorite places that I've really discovered moving over here is Midtown is super fun. There's lots of fun little restaurants and coffee shops and local boutiques and businesses that are fun to check out. But um, something really awesome is we are so close to many, like so many hiking trails, parks, outdoor recreational things like that and Tahoe is so nice and close so I think it's such an awesome balance of like finding fun local things to do places to get food but also like go outside and have some fun like go skiing in the winter or anything like that so there's a ton of things that you can do for fun awesome did anyone else have anything else they'd like to add I think you guys hit on everything. So I hope that answers your question, Jenny. Um, and then Haley, we uh, are addressing your second question in the PowerPoint too. So two for two with your questions, good job. Um, let's see. So we have a couple more questions here in the chat that I'd like to do before we go back to the PowerPoint. I'm gonna do the quicker one first. Uh, do all BSMD programs require the MCAT since I heard that not all programs require the exam. Uh, so again, it just depends on the program and its requirement. With UNR BSMD, you do need to take the MCAT and you need to score in the 60th percentile. So I believe that would be putting you in the top 40%. Roughly that translates to a 503 out of 528. There are certain programs like Case Western Reserve where they don't require an MCAT, but going to a school that difficult, they kind of assume that you are prepared for their medical school. Um, the next question that I want the panelists to answer, for the BSMD application essays, did you guys focus more on your medical experiences and STEM skills or experiences or personal hobbies and stories? So that's in the chat, if you guys would like to refer to it, but. I'm gonna keep my answer a bit shorter this time. I focused on my personal stories that had to do with medicine and science, and I've mostly focused on my medical experiences and STEM stuff, specifically for the BSMD program. For other schools, you know, that, that, that stuff changes, but for the BSMD program specifically, just personal stories related to medicine and med and STEM stuff. Um, I'll go. Um, I definitely, for my BSMD application essays, and I think the prompts change year to year, but you're generally always going to have the question of like, why do you want to be a physician? Um, and I think my year, it kind of asked more along the lines of like, out of any healthcare profession, why are you choosing a physician over other things like maybe becoming a nurse or um, a physician's assistant or things like that? Um, so definitely... Those are experiences where I think I focus more on personal stories because I think it speaks a lot to your character. And um, I think it really gives you that personal touch and you can apply a lot of those like STEM skills and experiences to your personal stories. So I think you develop all of those skills through that, but then you can apply those in personal stories. And I think it just makes you more of a person. Like when they can't meet you yet and they're just reading their app, your application, it gives them a better idea of like, oh my gosh, this, here's Hannah. I learned about her through her essay and see that like she has established these skills but has applied them in her personal life and has like antidotes that make them applicable, I guess.
Awesome. If uh, anyone else has anything else, anything else to say, feel free. But if not, that's okay too. Um, so briefly, in my essay that I use for both DSMD and for scholarships, I actually talked about the October one shooting, and how the following weekend one of the patients I was discharging was affected uh, as a result of this shooting. So it was more tying in my experiences growing up in Vegas with that awful tragedy and that rekindling my passion for medicine. So I guess to answer the question, it focused on my medical experiences because it was talking about my hospital volunteering, but it was something a little bit more personal and intimate too, which I believed helped me stand out. Uh, before we jump back into the PowerPoint, I wanna go ahead and actually answer Haley's questions. Uh, of what is a typical daily schedule look like and balancing work life, just in case we don't have enough time. Um, we have until like three o'clock, so we should have enough time to do everything, but just in case, let's get those questions answered first and then jump back into the PowerPoint. So let me copy and paste them back so it's at the bottom of the chat. So the first question, what is a typical daily schedule look like? If anyone wants to jump in. I can go for this one. Awesome. I feel like um, our schedules are really similar to pretty much every other pre-meds schedule. Um, I wake up at probably like 6.30 a.m. I start studying by eight, take a break by 12, have lunch, and then study again till five or six. And the thing is the schedules are different from for everybody because you're going to find what works for you and what doesn't. And my freshman year, I wouldn't even start studying until two in the afternoon and then I'd study till midnight and that worked then. Um, it's going to change, but I would say that setting up a consistent schedule for yourself is one of the most important things you can do and getting a planner for it as well. Um, that would help a lot. And so also volunteering about once a week um, is part of the schedule as well. And then until this year I was working, so I, I would work three to four days a week. And this kind of ties into your um, did you have time for other activities other than academics? One thing I really want to recommend is that if you don't have to work for month, like to for financial reasons, I would recommend don't do it. Spend that time volunteering or spending time in a research lab or something because working does take up about 20 hours a week if you're working a part-time job. And I really wish that I would have spent that time freshman and sophomore year volunteering instead. And so while you can do it all, it does take a lot of time out of your life. And so if you don't have to do it, spend that time doing things that are gonna benefit your application even more. Because while working does benefit your application and some people cannot avoid it, spending that time doing community service hours instead, I think would have helped me a lot. So that's one thing I would really like to say is spend that time doing other things if you don't have to do it. Um, just adding to that, I would say it's like, as Keena said, our like course load, I guess, is not necessarily different than a typical pre-med student. Uh, but I, there's definitely less of a press pressure to like fill your resume with every activity ever. So for me, time management was really big my freshman year when I was approaching like the club fair and things like that. I really didn't want to overcommit myself because like, and this is something that you know as an individual, but like where you set your boundaries of like, oh my gosh, this is too overwhelming. So um, I like I didn't work my freshman year. And then I now have two part-time jobs, but it's one of those where you just need to be honest with yourself and say like, is this time worth it to me? Like, and one thing that I do is like, I work honestly not a ton at my retail job, but my boss is so flexible because she knows like school's my priority. So sometimes you just have to tell yourself like school's my main job and this is what I'm here for. Like I'm here to educate myself and prepare myself for medical school. Um, and sometimes it's hard because if you have some friends who aren't necessarily, um, they don't have the same workload as you and they're like, oh, hey, you want to hang out all the time? It's it's hard, but it's, sometimes you have to say no. Like saying no is challenging, but it's it's better for yourself. Like I need to just sit down and like focus. And sometimes I spend a little bit more time planning my weeks 
than I would on other weeks because it's it's nice to like prioritize and say like okay what am I going to spend my time doing but then like I know we've all been doing online school <laughs> and it's super hard to stay motivated and that is just very relatable for any student ever so like right now for me I like I don't get up at 6 30 I get up at like 7 30 and I work out in the morning just to like make sure I can clear my head and then I really enjoy cooking so like I make sure that I cook dinner every night as kind of like a stress reliever and I like sit down and watch tv you know like sometimes you really just need to take that like mental break for yourself and then you just need to prioritize the rest of your time like oh this day I'm going to go to the library for this many hours and like make sure if you have like an asynchronous class, like, okay, I really need to sit down and like schedule this time to make sure I get everything done, but it is totally manageable. And I think you just have to focus on like yourself and deciding how much you feel like you can take on and still be successful and still have like good mental health and physical health and take care of yourself. It's just different for each person, you know, like Keenan and Hannah both saying like they wake up like 6.30, 7.30. Meanwhile, I'm here waking up 9, 10 o'clock because I schedule my stuff for the later afternoon classes because I don't know, maybe I'm playing too many games at night with my friends, you know, may or may not be happening. Um, but it's really just like, it's just different for each person because so, I'm very different from the way you can see. I, I kind of push myself a little later in the day work, um, do my schooling and all that a little later. Um, and just really managing what works for you as a person. So like, I know I'm not morning birds. That's why I don't pull my class. I do, do my best not to take those morning classes, take them a later. Uh, and just knowing yourself as Hannah was saying, you know, be true to yourself and knowing how you work as a person. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna add one more thing. Um, so, and I also wanna say like, when it comes to like your course load per se, and I know this is in the PowerPoint that we're gonna go over later, but I think it applies to this. So I'm gonna say it really fast, but like, when you choose your major, it's going to be the same, like you're having your undergraduate degree requirements, but it's going to be different for each major. And I bet Roshan can speak to this as well, but like we're both microbio majors. And I've found that like a not a lot of my classes have a lot of multiple like time offerings. So like I have one option to take this class because it's a smaller major. So sometimes you can try really hard to optimize your schedule. like. Saad so knows that he is not waking up before nine, then like, obviously he's not gonna schedule a class before then, but like, I prefer to get all of my classes done in the morning, but sometimes I just can't do that because like there's only one class offering. So I've really found that optimizing my time in between classes is important because I like to get, I like to have my evening to myself and just like clear my head. So um, that's definitely something you might consider when picking a major is how like, dem I don't know, I don't want to say to but like some of the classes are smaller as you, and you just like, encounter this as you get into upper division classes, there's just less sections offered, but um, you, you, you can look at that in your flexibility, I guess. Now you do have to be flexible because next semester is going to be a different ball game for me. I have a 7.30 a.m. class that I just have to take. There's no other way around it. So I'm going to have to fix myself that way. <laughs> Yeah, I have no class until like 10 a.m. onwards, so it's just, it's beautiful. I don't know how people function before then. But um, anyway, I, th I hope that answers your question, uh, Haley, I believe. Yeah, I hope that answers your question, uh, questions. And if there aren't any more in the chat, we're going to just jump back into the PowerPoint. All right, hope you guys can still see my screen. All right. So let me make sure we did the, yeah, we did this question. So if you could change anything about your BSMD experience, what would it be and why? I think for me personally, I wish I would have found a hobby sooner because I came to college and I didn't have any hobbies that I like did for myself because all throughout high school, I was, doing all of these things, but it always felt like it was to check this box on my application and make sure I was in this club this semester and get coming to college. I didn't have things that I 
knew that I liked to do until like my sophomore year. And the thing is, having those things is extremely important because the most successful people in college and medical school are the ones who have the best coping skills and coping mechanisms because it's going to be stressful at times and how you're able to cope with that and handle that stress is going to be a huge indicator of your success later on. And so developing hobbies and things that can take you out of your academic setting and fill your cup, I think are so important. And so I wish I would have focused on finding like that for myself sooner. And I would highly recommend people find that as well. It's perfect. Uh, anyone else? Um, I'd like to add, so this is a little bit more specific, I guess, but um, so as a sophomore in the program, there is no class that you take with just your cohort. So your freshman year, you take a class where it's just your cohort, and then you take the MCAT class junior year. So you're just kind of like chilling your sophomore year, hanging out, doing whatever. Um, and I, I think it's been especially hard with the pandemic and classes being online, but I wish that I had like really kept up with being in contact with my cohort more often because we used to see each other like every single week. So um, I think really emphasizing that support that you get from your cohort and focusing on the fact that like you guys are in it together and you're in a lot of the same classes and you have these shared experiences that some other pre-meds might not understand per se. Um, and really focusing that like you just have this awesome built-in support system and just utilizing that to its fullest potential. That's beautiful. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to say about this question? No? Okay. I guess there's not much to change about the BSMD experience. It's already so great. Um, so speaking about cohort support, I think Hannah was getting, kind of getting into that. How does your cohort support one another? I mean, it's a fast and easy friend group, like automatically given to you. Like I play Fortnite with some of them. Like I immediately found some buddies I can play games with. Um, which was, as I was saying earlier, it's easier. It's very, it was very, I'm very grateful for that, especially during the pandemic, because it's my first year at college. And you just, online classes aren't conducive to meeting people. It's just, they're just not, most people have their cameras off, it's, you know, because may or not be taking class in bed uh so they don't um so it's just hard to meet people so it was a, a great way to automatically meet great people and automatically uh have someone you can talk to that really knows exactly what you're going through and you start like signing up classes the same classes right so like sometimes maybe you have to like miss a lecture or you don't understand what the professor was talking about here and you just quickly message up your buddy in psm to be like yo what's what's going on here they go like oh i got you and they explain to you what's going on um, and it's very helpful to just automatically have a great group of people that you can rely on. Um, I would also add that maybe not just your cohort in itself, but also the co cohorts above you and below you. So it's like a whole community all together. And I think what's so awesome about it, like, for example, Keetna, I text Keetna and ask her questions because sometimes I'm like, man, I'm thinking about taking this class or something like what professor should I take or like stuff like that where it's just like getting advice from people who have gone through it before you and then we also have this awesome program with um, former BSMD students who are currently in medical school so you get like a mentor who is above you in med school so I get coffee with my mentor and she's so awesome and it's just really great to see like a reassuring thing like I can do this people before me have done it like this is their advice and how to be successful and like they're doing it so it can just it can happen you know a little bit of manifestation I guess but um it's just so great to have someone who like understands what you're going through and it can be really hard like pre-med culture I don't want to like down on it but it can be kind of negative in the competitive nature of it and unfortunately, not everyone, like people are super competitive and they don't necessarily see the support that comes in working together. And that's what's so awesome about our program is that you're not competing with each other in any way. Like you're all in the same boat. So you should be helping each other and realizing like we're in it to win it together kind of thing. Like you're in it for the next seven to eight years. And it's just like instant support in that it's just like, 
I don't know. I couldn't speak more highly of the support that comes with it in the world of pre-med culture. Awesome, great. Um, I think we can move on to the next question, but yeah, basically your cohort helps you develop really good friendships and hobbies to kind of get away from the stresses of school, whether that's like playing Fortnite. Uh, I like to play tennis with my friends, uh, play like Madden and 2K. So uh, it's really important to have that support group so that you don't go too crazy in undergrad and med school. So what research opportunities are available to BSMD students? Maybe I think I can speak onto this. Uh, the same opportunities that everyone else is having, you have those same opportunities. But at the same time, you get a little bit more leeway. You're at you know UNR, and there aren't that many BSMD students. So if a you know research professor or a PI is thinking about, hey, who do I choose? They see someone who's a BSMD student. There's a, an expected you know degree of of qualification that comes with it maybe like I know some people who have just talked to other professors been like I'm interested in research I want to be I'm part of the BSMD program can I join your lab and they, they just say yes to it you also have access to all of the the research mentors I think might be the right word like the the people who are in charge of distributing projects um at UNR just because you're already you know, integrated into the medical school system. So if you ask one of our advisors and you ask them, hey, I'm interested, they'll set you up with someone who can help you out. Um, in, in terms of like specific research, you can work at a lab, you know, with test tubes and pipettes. You can work, you know, out in the field if you're interested in that type of stuff. You can work at a public health office where you deal with, you know, data information. You can do stuff on your own if you're interested in just like browsing through databases and, you know, doing something, finding some statistical analysis on that. There's lots of research opportunities available. I just say that for BSMD students, you kind of have a leg up in terms of, you know, getting accepted into some of these projects. And I also think some, a benefit is like, well, so like research isn't for everyone. Like me personally, I'm not super interested in research. And so I think it's good to show that like, research is not a requirement but I know a lot of people are interested. Um, so we have some awesome advisors that work with you throughout your entire undergraduate career. And if you go to them and you say like, hey, I'm interested in research, like I'm looking at it for next year, they're, they're a little bit more in the in on like what's happening in the university and they have more connections than you might have. So if you give them a heads up, like, hey, I'm gonna be interested in the future. Like if you hear of anything, let me know. Then you kind of have that networking so although all these research opportunities are probably open to everyone they might hear about it before other students and that might give you a little bit of a leg up into finding a new opportunity yeah i uh i think that's great i think we can move on to the next question all right so are there any non-pre-med classes that you would recommend uh, just real quick before you guys jump in, like I said, I'm a business administration minor, so those classes have been incredibly fun, uh, accounting, marketing, uh, information systems. So I personally would recommend getting that business minor, and those are the non-pre-med classes that I would highly, highly recommend. I'll go next. One non-pre-med class that I would highly recommend is any um, PEX class, which is going to be classes with the gym. I'm in my first one this semester. I'm taking beginner's yoga and it forces me to be active and move twice a week. And I would, I think I genuinely would have a lot harder of a time scheduling that time to move and take care of myself. And so being enrolled in a one credit gym class has actually been so beneficial for not only my mental health, but physical health as well. So I would definitely recommend looking into that because UNR's gym is phenomenal and the resources at that gym are amazing. So I would definitely like recommend enrolling in a one credit gym class. I'm going to second that because Keetna convinced me to sign up for the yoga next semester. But um, I think something that's really important is realizing like you don't need to only take STEM classes when you get to college. There are so many options and that's like 
for a lot of kids, they come in not knowing what they want to do. And that's what's so awesome is you have like endless opportunities that you didn't have during high school. So like my freshman year, I took sculpture and I was like, oh, this will be fun. Like I need to meet my art credit. And I absolutely loved it because I thought like, okay, sculpture is like mixed media, stuff like that. But I ended up welding and woodworking, which was totally out of my comfort zone, but it was the most fun class. And I like, I loved it. So sometimes just picking that random class that like sounds weird, but like you're like, oh, I guess I'll give it a shot, like turns out to be an awesome experience. And it's a nice break from some of the other classes and allows you to do more hands-on fun stuff. Yeah, the university has some like, like when you start like in freshman year, I'm doing a lot of classes that aren't really pre-med classes, they're kind of like the, the general education requirements. Like it was the art credit one. So like for that one, I've been doing, I've been doing like piano classes and things like that. So like with those, with those requirements, you can e very easy fit in non-pre-med classes that they're working, for the, you, you have to do them anyways, you have to fulfill their credit anyways, and you can, it's like a broad, and like another class, I'm, I'm taking like a Middle East culture class right now, and that's also part of like a class, a credit I had to take, and I easily got like an interesting class that I thought would be really cool to take within that still, and it's not that hard to like get that like different type of class into my schedule. Just quickly, I think everybody no matter like if you are interested in medicine at all should be taking like a bioethics class like a philosophy of medicine or philosophy of science class i think those classes really help you to put some of the science stuff into perspective because a lot of times we think of science as like this hard and fast sort of like if this is x then the end result is y right we think of it in very definite terms and i think that those types of classes really help to like focus your perspective of like what you're doing in terms of like its impact on people and how important that kind of stuff is and the decisions you make. I always find those types of discussions really interesting. So I think, yeah, bioethics are like a philosophy of science type class. Yeah, that's totally great. And especially those kind of classes will help you foster those multiple perspectives for your MMI interview. So that's really great that you can combine humanities with sciences because they're really not all that different. Um, it's just, helping you get to that same end goal. So I was asked by my boss to kind of wrap up this presentation. So let's just go through these questions and see if there's anything that really sticks out. Uh, we've given a lot of advice for BSMD applicants so far, uh, but if there's like more of a specific question, let's see. Oh, you're not interrupting at all. Uh, I'm really glad that you enjoyed it and uh, good luck at your appointment. So, and we got the advice taken care of. What is a typical BS? Oh, okay. It looks like we're on our last question. So let's, let's do this one. What is a typical BSMD course load look like? Is it different than a traditional pre-med course load? And this was something that someone had asked when they were RSV RSVPing for the event. So let's go ahead and answer this one before we wrap up. I think we had kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but um, I would say in general, it's very comparable because you're still completing your general undergraduate degree. Um, but then it kind of depends on what you want to do with it. So some people come in with a lot more um, like AP credits or community college credits, which might allow you a little bit more flexibility. Um, and that's very individual. Like I came in with a lot of credits, but I chose to retake some of them just to really strengthen my foundation. But I could have, I could have just like not retaken those and then taken some other classes. So it really is kind of an individual experience, but the only courses that you take that are like specific to your BSMD cohort are going to be a class that you take your freshman year. Um, that's any freshman in the College of Science will be taking it as well, but you have one that's just your cohort and it kind of focuses on exposing you to the program as well as looking at focus track requirements. And then your junior year, you take the MCAT class that helps you prep to take the MCAT. But otherwise I would say it's very similar to a traditional pre-med course load. And they make sure you work really closely with an advisor who is awesome and knows everything that you should be taking and when you should be taking it. Um, and they'll help you make sure that you're taking all the classes that you need to be successful, um, maybe prior to the MCAT as well as before med school. Awesome. Did uh, anyone else have anything they'd like to add in? Because I think I would have pretty much said the same thing that Hannah said. 
Nothing else? All right. I think there was something in the chat. Let me just check that real quick. Oh, in ninth grade. That's awesome. I'm really glad you're getting a head start and we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. So thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, just a quick reminder, college counseling is available at Excel Academy, and we offer services including college choice guidance, personal statement coaching, supplemental essays coaching, portfolio and res resume help, and interview prep, including interviews for BSMD, the multiple mini MMI interviews. Uh, three of our college counseling students got accepted into the BS into BSMD programs in 2021. And if you would like to set up a meeting and be part of that success, you can contact Mr. Brandon Kim, uh, brandon at excelacademy.com to set up a meeting. So just don't forget that we do offer that service. And I believe that's all the slides I have. Yep, that's it. So if you guys have any last minute questions right now, feel free to ask them. I'll stick around, uh, probably the panelists will too until everyone kind of trickles out of here. But thank you guys so much. This is a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Did you have a question? Oh no, I just wanted to say bye and thank you. Oh, of course, you're welcome. I was wondering if you guys had LinkedIn. I, I wanted to add you. I, I do. Here. It was really helpful. Um, I'm trying to get started already. I'm actually in speech and debate, and I'm. Uh, I think it really helps with um, getting into programs because it really helps with fluency and ability to.